أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله المنان الذي أكرمنا بالقرآن ثم جعله ثم جعله بصيرا في قلوب أهل البصائر والفرقان والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث هدى ورحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واقتفى بأثره لا يوم الدين أما بعد إخواني في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طبتم وطاب ممشاكم وتبوأتم من الجنة منزلة آمين Brothers and sisters in Iman Welcome back to another part of our show Why Should I And the topic of discussion today Being Why Should I Have Taqwa Why should I be pious? Why should I have taqwa? And why should I be pious? And inshallah, as a preamble to the topic, we will start by explaining what piety is. And the best example of piety or taqwa that can be given is the example which was given by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu as it is reported in an author concerning him that there came a man to him and told him, Ya Abu Huraira, akhbirni an taqwa O Abu Huraira, inform me, expound to me, define to me what is the meaning of the word taqwa, what is the meaning of the word piety, when we say someone is pious, someone is God-fearing, what is the meaning of that? So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu considered that the question deserves to be answered in the most eloquent way possible. So he engaged the person in a two-way two, uh, two, uh, two communication and asked him a couple of questions. He asked him, هل مشيت على طريق ذا شوق قط? Have you ever passed by a path which is full of thorns? He said, Bala, yes indeed, I've ever passed by a path which is full of thorns. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu asked him, Mada sana'ata? When you found yourself passing by a path which is full of thorns, what did you do? What was the mitigating? Uh, uh, how did you mitigate the situation? So he said, Kuntu idha ra'aytu shawkan ittaqaytu. Whenever I saw a thorn, I avoided stepping on it. Whenever I saw a thorn, I avoided stepping on it. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu arda answered him and told him, Fadaka taqwa. Now that is the true meaning of piety. I know till now we still are asking ourselves, okay, uh, it was thorns and the rest, yeah. So Ibn Mu'taz, rahimahullah, this great uh, uh, person amongst the scholars of the Salafi Salih, gave us an explanation in the most poetic ways and manners in a classically beautiful set of words when he said at taqwa that piety according to this narration and author from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu khalid dhunuba saghiraha wa kabiraha fa huwa tuqa wasma' kamashin fawqa ardi shawqi yahdharu ma yara لا تحقرن صغيرة فإن الجبال من الحصى. He said that piety is for you to stay away from sins, to take those thorns in the path of life to be seen, to take those thorns which are on your path to be sins, that uh, to be to be the sins that will come your way. As you are traveling and as you are journeying in this great path of life that we are in, to take sins to be thorns. It's not sensible for one to step on thorns. So, in the same same way, it won't be sensible for one to be committing sins. So, don't you take sins to be lightly. Don't you take sins to be lightly. But take sins with such gravity as the person who, t who, who, who was questioning Abu Huraira and who coincidentally 
happened to have passed by a path which is full of thorns. And whenever he saw a thorn, ittaqaytu, he said, I used to avoid it. So in the same, same way, you need to take wasma'a kamashin fawqa ardi shawqi yahdharu yahdharu ma yara. Be like that gentleman. Whenever you see sins, an opportunity of committing sins, avoid committing sins. In the same, same way, avoid stepping on thorns because it's just a figurative of speech. It is, fig my, uh, it is like bringing reality into perspective. Sins are like thorns. It's not sensible if you will be stepping on, on thorns because they will harm you. In the same way, the sins will harm you. So don't take sins lightly. فَإِنَّ الْجِبَالَ مِنَ الْحَصَى For even the huge mountains that we see and admire are made up of tiny pebbles, tiny stones. So in the same, same way as the Prophet wasallam used to say that the sins, subhanallah, they pile up on a person hatta yuhlika. The, they pile up on a person until they destroy that person. Until they destroy you. So those sins, don't take them lightly. Avoid committing sins. Avoid committing sins. Don't take sins to be lightly. Stay away from sins. And as the ulama say, Babu nahi akbar min babi al amru. لِأَنَّ مُخَالَفَةَ الْأَمْرِ مِنَ الْمَنْهِيَاتُ كَذَلِكَ That when we are discussing the things that are prohibited, the things that are prohibited are more than the things that are commanded. For even the things that are commanded, suppose if you were to contradict a command from Allah and the Prophet wasallam, your contradiction of those commands is part and parcel of something which is prohibited. For Allah says, Allah wa Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Prophet If you choose to disobey them, then it's something which is prohibited and it's something which is sinful. So, brothers and sisters in Iman, piety means in a nutshell, avoid committing sins. For if you will avoid abiding by a command of Allah and the Prophet وسلم, even that is a sin. And it can be even a greater sin. So, brothers and sisters in Iman, the shortcut to piety is one, avoiding committing sins. Avoiding being a tariq salah for instance. Avoiding not fasting in Ramadan. Staying away from not giving zakah. You need to be paying zakah. So, if you if, if you stay away from giving zakah, then it means that you have committed a sin. So you need to stay away from the bad habit of not giving zakah, for it is something which is prohibited. So brothers and sisters in Iman, in a nutshell, taqwa means avoid to the best of your ability, avoid committing sins. So we come back to the topic of discussion. Why should we be pious? Why should we have taqwa? For we normally hear this in each and every Friday sermon. The khatibs will always narrate to us the verses of the Quran that speak about taqwa. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah, be pious, be God conscious, be pious, have piety. And don't die unless you are a Muslim. Meaning strive in being a practical Muslim in, in the rest, for the rest of your life. We normally hear, constantly hear these verses being narrated by the khatibs on, in the Friday sermons. So why is it so important to the point that it's part of our Friday sermons? It's part of our day-to-day -day life. That is whatever we advise each other. Brothers and sisters in Iman, it's essential to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself advises us. He gives us, it is his wasiyah, it is his advice to us. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullaha. 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nasu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, وَلَقَدْ وَصَيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ I'm sorry, that is the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. No. وَلَقَدْ وَصَيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah says, and we gave our advice to those ones who were given books before this Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same advice that we later on gave to this Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is that advice? Anittaqullah, be pious, be God conscious, have piety, have taqwa. So it is the advice of Allah to the previous nations and still to this nation. Taqwa is so important till the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us, Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt. وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُوهَا وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلِقٍ حَسَنٍ In this authentic hadith, the Prophet advised the Sahaba by telling him, be pious, be God conscious wherever you are. Brothers and sisters in Iman, in the hadith by Abu Sa'id al-Khudari, رضي الله عنه, which Imam al-Albani in Sahih al-Targhib says, صحيح لغيره, that this hadith, it is sahih لغيره, meaning it is in the daraja of Hassan, Hassan hadith, a good hadith, but then there are many good hadiths that, uh, that point out or there is an authentic hadith or verse of the Quran, but essentially sahih لغيره, meaning it is a Hassan hadith, but then there are various indicators that raises its position maybe there are many similar hadiths that will uh, that are sahih or that are in the same level of hasan that will push it to the daraja of sahih so sahih lighayrihi in that hadith he says ja'a rajulun ila rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa qala ya rasulallah awsini awsini ya rasulallah a man came to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeking Advice. What did the Prophet advise him? He said, عَلَيْكَ بِالتَّقْوَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا جِمَاعُ كُلِّ خَيْرِ Subhanallah. Be pious. Strive to be pious and God conscious. Fear Allah. Be God fearing. For it is this quality of piety and pious. جِمَاعُ كُلِّ خَيْرِ Subhanallah. It will bring to you each and everything which is khair. Khairu dunya wal akhira. It will bring to you, it will gather for you every khair. Be it the khair of dunya or the khair of akhira. Be pious and it will gather for you everything which is khair for you. Both in dunya and akhira brothers and sisters in iman. The way... Imam al-Qurtubi alayhi rahmatullah said pertaining to subhanallah, no, the way Shaykh Nasir al-Sa'di alayhi rahmatullah says in his tafsir pertaining to the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu in tattaqu Allah yaj'al lakum furqana or you who fear, or, or you who believe, if you'll be pious and God conscious, then Allah will bless you by giving you the criterion, the ability to distinguish between good and evil. Make sure you stay tuned for the second part of the show, inshallah, for you to hear now more detailed reasons specifying why we need to be pious and God conscious. Barakallahu feekum. الحمد لله كفى والصلاة والسلام على المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته واقتفى بأثره إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Iman Why should we be pious? We already heard in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudari رضي الله عنه The Prophet advising this sahaba telling him عليك بالتقوى الله فَإِنَّهَا جِمَاعُ كُلِّ خَيْرِ Be pious. Be God conscious. For this quality of God consciousness and piety and taqwa will gather for you everything which is khair for you, both in dunya and akhira. Now let us start looking at 
these things that are the khair of dunya and akhirah and these things that if we only we will be pious we will be able to get all these things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy quran pertaining to the rewards of being pious he starts and says subhanallah allahu akbar subhanallah wallahi if only we knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man yattaqillah yaj'al lahu furqana that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja wa yarzuquhu min haythu la yahtasib that if indeed you fear Allah if indeed you pious wa man yattaqillah يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will give you a way and a path out of each and every difficulty in life. How many of us currently are running up and down? Some of us go as far as using black magic just to take themselves out of calamities and difficulties. And yet the answer is in having taqwa, being pious. When Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا the solution is in front of us we need to find a way a path out of difficulties and calamities in life you don't need to commit suicide subhanallah you don't need to seek things that are haram no you don't need to be a quitter what you need is just to be pious and god conscious wa yarzuquhu min haythu la yahtasib allah continues and this is in surah at-talaq and for he who will be pious and god fearing and god conscious allah will give him or her his or her provision by means and through ways that will be beyond his or her comprehension subhanallah allah will give you provision how many of us are currently selling their deen because of fulus because of rizq you're selling your deen because of money how many of us we are ready we are prepared to renounce islam because of wealth and yet subhanallah if only we were god conscious if only subhanallah what is this dunya what is this dunya the word dunya comes from the word dun something which has no value in it even in swahili we say duni something kituduni something that has no value in it something has no worth why should it be a reason for you to destroy your akhirah subhanallah subhanallah we have to be pious and god conscious the answer is only in being god conscious you become god conscious allah will give you provisions through means you never comprehended as if it's not enough wa may yattaqillah yaj'al lahu min amrihi yusra allah says and for he who will be god conscious and who will have piety allah will easen his affairs for him or her allah will easen that person's affairs Allah will make your affairs easy for you if only we had pi- we were pious as if it's not enough Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayuhal ladhina amanu in tattaqu Allah yaj'al in tattaqu Allah yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukaffir ankum sayyi'atikum wa yaghfir lakum wallahu dhul fadlil azim in surah al-anfal if i'm not wrong Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh you who believe subhanallah oh you who believe he's calling to us in the most lenient of ways in the most inspiring way oh you who believe in tattaqu in tattaqu Allah yaj'al lakum furqana if only you'll be pious if you'll be pious then Allah will g- g- bless you by giving you the criterion the ability to distinguish between good and evil 
between good people and evil people, people who you shouldn't take, emulate, and make to be your role models, and people who you should emulate and take to, to be your role models. In the current world, current affairs, the most affecting thing that we are sub subjected to, the youths are being subjected to, is when they choose the wrong persons to be their role models. They lose clear track of the purpose behind their creation, which is taqwa. It is the chief purpose behind everything, behind our existence. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I didn't, I did not, I did not create jinns and mankind for any other purpose except for them to establish worship to me. So, worshipping Allah is the main purpose, but there is a chief objective behind worshipping Allah. What is that objective? Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Subhanallah. The chief objective behind every act of worship is so that you'll become more pious, so that you'll get this quality of God consciousness, so that you'll have piety, so that you'll have taqwa. For Allah says, O oh, you people, ya ayyuha nas O oh, you mankind, worship Allah, worship Allah. Your creator, he who created you, and those ones who are there before you. Why? So that you will become God conscious. So subhanallah, if only we will serve our main focus in life, which is to be obedient servants of Allah, who will be rewarded by the quality of taqwa and piousness, and as a result, we'll gather all the khair of dunya and akhara. Now listen to this khair of dunya, which will reflect in akhara. So, most of our youths are being exposed to the negative role models in the society, and as a result, they lose track of their dunya and akhara. If only we had the piety, then Allah would have blessed us to have this ability, furqan, this ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. Do you think Umar bin al-Khattab was called al-Faruq for, for any other purpose? He was called this. This is a title that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with. That's why he had it. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was pleased with in reference to Umar. رضي الله عنه الفاروق why because he had Allah blessed him with the ability to distinguish between that which is right and that which is wrong and سبحان الله we celebrate him رضي الله عنه وأرضاه and we love him I love him more than my family more than myself and may Allah accept it from me سبحان الله this great man الفاروق عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنهما this great man was a pious person and is the best example that we have. So brothers and sisters in Iman, we will be blessed with the ability to distinguish between good and evil. And then, وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ Another reward, Allah will forgive us our sins. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ And Allah will forgive us. And this are uh, one of the two uh, they, they mean, they are two different words, but they mean the same thing. But as Imam uh, Shaykh Nasir Sa'adi alayhi rahmatullah says, whenever they meet, فَإِذَا اجْتَمَعَتَا فَتَكْفِيرُ السَّيِّئَاتِ بِمَعْنَ الصَّغَائِرِ وَمَغْفِرَةِ الذُّنُوبِ بِمَعْنَ الْكَبَائِرِ When they meet, when they are separated, they mean the same being forgiven your sins. But when they meet together in the same sentence, takfiru sayyat means you'll be forgiven your small minor sins, and takfiru dhunub means you'll be forgiven your major sins. So having piety is a reason for you, subhanallah, for you to be forgiven your sins. As, it, as if it's not enough, subhanallah, having piety or taqwa is a reason for you to be with Allah. 
لنيل معية الله إن الله مع الذين تقوا Allah says in the Quran that indeed he is together with those people who are pious. You'll have togetherness. You, Allah will be with you and if Allah will be with you and for you, who will be against you? Who can go against you? Subhanallah. Even shaitan. لِلْإِنْتِصَارَ عَلَى شَيْطَانْ فَعَلَيْكَ بِالتَّقْوَ الله. If you want to win the battles against shaitan, the constant battles against shaitan, be pious, have taqwa. Simple. Brothers and sisters in Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in another verse, he tells us in the Holy Quran, uh, 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 Fear Allah and subhanallah, Allah will give you knowledge. Imam al-Qurtubi alayhi rahmatullah says that this verse means that At-taqwa min asbabi naylil ilm, subhanallah. Uh, at least I'm informing you fi ma'na al-qawl as he states in the tafsir of this verse that in uh, uh, taqwa is a reason for you to have knowledge if you'll have taqwa then Allah will increase you in knowledge you'll have the ability to comprehend the things that are complex Allah will educate you for those who, of us who are students of knowledge and the rest have piety and education will become easy for you for Allah Inna Allah bikulli shay'in alim. Allah has knowledge over everything. So we'll stop at that. All these reasons. Then why shouldn't we have taqwa? All these reasons. We need to have taqwa, brothers and sisters in Iman. Barakallahu feekum subhanakallahu wa bihamdikun ashadu la ilaha ila ant. Wa nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk.